guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be putting on uh, the tires on the rims and gonna be putting on some Gorilla Tape instead of the rim straps and putting the holes in. So we're gonna do that whole nine yards and we're gonna mount the actual tires and then see what it looks like. Um, well, so mount the tires and then the rims. So stay tuned for that. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell that we can come on back, check out what we got going on. Like I said, I'm always doing stuff. So, all right, don't forget to smash the like button as well. Always appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Got the tires ready to go. Got the rear rim ready to go. I'm just waiting on my, uh, my anti-pinch tool so I can install the rims. Got a new inner tube for the rear and for the front coming. I just said, screw it, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there, so. They're ready to go. Let's, put, let's uh, hit these in the soda blaster real quick. So all this will get clean in the soda blaster. I already got my rim locks cleaned up. They're ready to go. I got the front axle cleaned up. And then I'll grease that when I put it all together. So I should have the pinch tool, anti-pinch tool by... Uh, I would say Wednesday. Love putting this stuff in a soda blaster when it's dirty. Doesn't take the yellow zinc coating off, but it cleans it up real nice. There is a direction that this goes on. So if you look on here, you can see the word drive. So you want that on the outside. Because caliper's on the left. Obviously, I'm wondering if I'm going to have to go back and tighten up my rear spokes because they're new after maybe a couple, couple laps. I don't know how that works. If anybody does, let me know. Put it down in the comment section. Will I have to retighten my spokes? My new spokes after like an hour of riding or something. Or half hour. All right, we're good to go. I did use my calipers and uh, set it to make sure that the hub was centered. And all I did was I put it to what the manual suggests, which is uh, 1.10 and then locked it and then just measured just like that. Obviously not on here. I actually did it. I checked it here on both sides, spun it 90 degrees, and then checked it again. And then I also did it on the ground because it seems like this welding table is a little off. So I just wanted to make sure. But check that on both the front and rear rims, and I'm good to go. The front rim is 1.1 uh, inch, and you measure with the brake side down and so you're measuring from here to the edge of the rim well on the rear tire or on the rear rim you're measuring from the gear side of the hub and that is supposed to be 1.91 and so i checked them both and they got them dead on so good to go so i'll have to fill those with grease put those on there i'm not going to do that until i get the the uh tires on though all right so i got the rear rim on the stand here um i ended up getting some black duct tape i'm gonna go ahead and put that on the inside and uh yeah i actually put the rear tire halfway on there and then i was like oh crap i totally forgot to put the stinking rim, the rim strap so uh that's what i'm gonna do now is uh get this stuff on there and then uh start putting this tire on 
So a couple things that you'll need to make it easy. Um, I know this doesn't look like much, but it's really soapy water in a rag. And then you can wipe the both the rim and the bead of the tire. <clears throat> what that does is it just helps it to slip on there a lot easier when you get it on the rim. Uh, you don't want to use something like grease because that will stay slippery. So um, you're better off using some type of tire paste or just regular old soap and water because that dries up and it doesn't leave a slippery surface. So. so I got a brand new Tusk brand inner tube. This is a 110 to 120, 90, 19. So you can use it on a 110 or 120. And stock tire size for this 06 250 is a 100 by 90 by 19. But I'm putting a 110 on there and that's gonna be that so i also have a i believe it's a tusk brand front inner tube coming as well my old inner tube is pretty stinking dirty and shabby looking feels kind of thin too for old school and i'm sure it's probably just worn over time i mean it's still good it's best i know so i'll be able to keep it for an extra and uh yeah whatever so all right let's get some tape on these rims all right, so what you're gonna wanna do is make sure, obviously these were just freshly powder coated, but um, either way, you're gonna wanna take some sort of cleaner, cleanse the inside, just to make sure your tape's got a nice clean surface to stick to. That way it doesn't slide around at all. So I'm just gonna use a little hair of uh, carbon chill cleaner, what have you. And uh, we'll just go ahead and get this wiped down on the inside here. Alright, and then uh, next step, it's pretty easy. This stuff is pretty wide, it's like two inches, so you shouldn't have to put more than maybe two rounds just to be safe. Technically speaking, you could probably even put your, your old strap over these. And this will help to seal out any moisture as well. Alright. Now what you need to do is cut your hole for your rim lock as well as your inner tube.
All right, I got the brake rotor back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the collars real quick. The first thing I'm gonna do is ensure that this these inner lips are free and clear of any sort of grime. They're new, but you never know. Go ahead and these I clean these all up. Soda blaster once again. Pretty lightly greased up my axle after cleaning it, as well as cleaned up my adjuster spacers and my nut and washer for the other side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is account for the tire here and the chain. Not exactly sure how, and it shouldn't be too much of a difference. I should be able to go ahead and just tighten those back up. Now, if you crank it from the top, forward that will push the make sure that the axle is pushed up against the chain adjuster and get the torque wrench out it's 96 foot pounds All right, let's go ahead and mount the front tire on the rim. All right, look what just came in the mail. Got the Baja no pinch tool. This is an adapter that goes on your tire changing station. All right, so we got some Allen wrenches and the tool. Hey, look, there's even a sticker. Gotta love that. All right, so that's the piece there. And we got the handle.
and the pivot stem. So I ended up ended up getting the 25 millimeter as well. That way I could use it on the rear axle, which I already put the rear tire on, so it's good quality, that's for sure. I'll have to throw some grease on that. Lock that up. I'm going to put a little dab of grease on here. Snug that up. All right, let's go over to the tire changing stand. Okay, we already got our double layer of tape on the inside there. Let's see if it'll work this way. All right, so it looks like I have this shaft too far in here. So let me adjust that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's hanging up in there because this is too far up. So I had this up and it was hanging up in there. So you want to back it out to where it's flush and then lock your set screw. And I was under the impression that this would actually go over that bar, which I think would be pretty cool. But it looks like it just slips in there. Okay, so you gotta be careful of how deep you have this. Because it looks like if you put it have all if you have it all the way down, you could potentially scrape the rim pretty pretty good. So it might actually be a good idea to put the spacer in first. All right, so we got a new tube as well, 8121 Tusk. Just gonna go ahead and put a little air in here. Nothing big. Wow, that's unbelievable. <laughs> yes, I just put a little bit of baby powder on here.
been too big of a bite. There we go. I like it. Getting ready to uh, install these wheels, or this front wheel. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do though, is I wanted to take the brake caliper off, the bracket, and I ended up cleaning all this up. The stuff was super dirty. Like it just had like, you know, that tan look to it from all the dirt and sand, whatever. So I ended up just scrubbing them down. I got some buckets like that from when I used to do my fish stuff. And they're like a gallon bucket. Super useful though. So I put some hot soapy water in there, scrubbed it down with a scrub brush, and then took another bucket with clean water and a cup, held it right underneath, rinsed it off, wiped it all down, and then I took some magwheel cleaner. And um, first I wrapped my um, shocks with like a double, like fold, like two pieces of blue shop towel, and then I folded them up like in half, I doubled them up, wrapped them around here and then sprayed it on there and then brushed them and then rinsed the whole thing off. And then I ended up going back over and wiping these down with some simple green anyways. And then I did the same thing here. Um, I took the brake caliper off and cleaned it up pretty good. So I basically did the same thing. Um, I pushed in the old brake pads, popped those out, popped the, uh, the slide clips and then pulled the bracket off, cleaned everything up, soap and water. And then I hit it uh, with the magwheel cleaner as well. It turned out super nice. So these are the old pads right here. Um, there's still a little bit on them, but I'm putting new ones on there. So I already bought them. May as well put them on there. So at this point, I got all the hardware. Here's the bracket. Um, this side's already greased. And uh, I'm just going to take all this hardware and slap it in the uh, soda blaster real quick clean it all up get the grime off and then put some new pads on there like i said so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this stuff up and be back